scary. Okay, it's time for us to start off class. I want to thank you for being here this morning. Uh, Brother Walls had a little issue yesterday with his flight somewhat, so they didn't get in until about 8 o'clock this morning. I think that made the airport in Pittsburgh at 3.30 a.m., so they didn't get very much sleep. So he texted me yesterday and told me with all the things going on that he thought that I, uh, that if I could teach his class. And so he said, I'm going to send you the material. So he sent me the material. We're going to go over this morning. And we will do the best we can with it. But, uh, we appreciate you being here. We're going to keep doing our prayers. They got to uh, get home safely. We thank Lynn for doing that and going to the airport, picking them up early this morning. As I always do for my classes, I enjoy praying. And I want to know if y'all need anything. Prayers that we can say uh, here in this class, and we'll pray right after we do that. We're all good. We're all perfect. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's pray together, please. Lord, we thank you for this time and opportunity that we as Christians have on the first day of the week to take the time and effort to come to Bible class and be able to study from your word, to build up your word and understand what the Bible is speaking about and, and how it can affect our lives and how we can be better Christians and be drawn closer to you. And, doing the work that you've asked us to do and the tasks that you put before us. Father, this morning as I teach, I hope that everything that I say and do will be in accordance with your word, from your word. We hope that you can say the things that are important and will might challenge us as Christians to be drawn closer to you. Father, in our hearts and minds are a lot of people that are struggling with their health and maybe struggling with their spiritual health. Father, uh, please bless them, please be with them, please strengthen them, Please guide them and also guide us to where we can say the right things or maybe reach out and to ask them and if we can help in any way that we can offer our assistance. Our sister Trudy felt this morning getting out of the van. Father, please bless her and her leg as she's struggling and so I want you to be with her. Father, we're just so blessed to have you in our lives and thank you for everything you do for us each day in our lives. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen. I'm going to ask a very simple question to start class. A very simple but complex question, okay? What is the Bible? Word of God. Who said word. That? word of God, the Word, okay? What else? Anybody else? Yeah, I'm going to guide the Word from the prophets. Holy Spirit guided Word from the prophets. What did you say? Yeah. Or God. All right, we're going to talk about that this morning. I know that Walt's been talking about we're setting up evangelism to where we can do. Uh, evangelism one-on-one -on -one later on, and uh, we'll, we'll see some of the things that I've challenged him about. I've all, I challenged Walt to uh, put together some material on Sunday night where we can do a Bible class, or we can do a Bible class in the way of one-on-one -on -one Bible studies in people's homes. So you can see what it looks like and, and kind of get a feel of it, and, and I think it's something that we're vitally trying to uh, promote as our evangelism here in Sanford, be able to draw souls closer to, to us. And so he's been talking about him and Steve have been talking about what is God, who is Jesus, uh, who is the Holy Spirit. And, and, and today my topic is what is the Bible? Very simple but very complex statement. Uh, one of the most important things for all to know is the importance of the Bible for man today. What is it for us today? How does it reach us today? We must understand the importance of authority. I think that we've studied this somewhat in the past where we looked at how the authoritative, I know because I taught the class, authoritative Bible was by 40 inspired writers and they were inspired by God and they were inspired by the Holy Spirit and, and, and how that authority affects our life. See, we deal with authority as we're driving down the road and the speed limit says 55 mile an hour. 
when we see the man that can cause us problems as authority of the state trooper, we do what? We slow down, maybe. And then we just, or we try to dodge where he's sitting and we uh, kind of go, you know, on our way. Authority is something that we take care of. When you're in front of a judge, it's something that they have the authority and it actually affects you, correct? And you may not even have a lot of input in that authority sometimes, but it affects you. It, 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 it deals with you and it deals with your personal life. So let's think about spiritual authority is what we're thinking about this morning. And what is the Bible? Where do we get our spiritual authority? And I'm going to give you some topics. I don't know if they had a handout. I look for the extra ones. I don't know if there is anyone. I'm sorry if you don't know this, but I'm going to, I'm going to just tell you what he, he gave me. He did not give me a handout, but um, it, this is actually Walt's lesson that he, he uh, emailed me. And so I went through it and I put my little twist on it. You know how I do things. So um, I put my little insert in there. And so we'll, we'll be going through that this morning. But it affects our lives, the spiritual authority. So number one is the Bible, a book given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, okay? Of the Holy Spirit. What do you think inspired reads means? We've already said it this morning. It's God breathed, whoever said that. It's God breathed. Inspired means that God breathed. So if God breathed something, guess what? It's probably important. It's probably something that we ought to look at. It's probably something that we ought to take authority from. Uh, we have authority, right? We just said the judge is authority. If God is breathing something to us and he is our authority, we need to deal with that. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 says, very popular, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, which we just said was God breathed, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I'm going to go over that verse a little bit later on in the text. And we're going to go over there and we'll, and we'll uh, touch more on that verse because I want to really break it down for us. Uh, the other scripture that deals with that is uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21. Uh, For promising neighbor came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So we've already discussed all this. We've already talked about a lot of this. It's all 40 inspired words. We know it was not words that men said. It was words that were inspired by God and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Okay? And so those are what that that is what makes that important. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16 says, For... Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, which came from Isaiah, but we have the mind of Christ. I think sometimes we get through technical difficulties where we start worrying about uh, how important Christianity is, and then we get so wrapped up in the world sometimes that we start thinking like a lot of like the world does. The more we're not in church, the more we're not in service, the more we're not in around other fellow Christians, the more our minds tends to start veering towards what Humanity is trying to say what humans are trying to say what the world's trying to say what the news may put in our minds Which is unbelievably terrible mm -hmm. Sorry, I said that on camera, but I did So we got inspired means God breathed we got the scriptures that we talked about and the very word of the writers were inspired first Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 13 It says these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches But which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Remember, the word of God that we got is so simplified, but yet so complex that sometimes we need to worry about the complex side of it. God has given us a task of work. God has given us things to do. God has asked us to read the book. God has asked us to talk about the book, and we're going to go through that. So the first thing I said was a book given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Number two. Number two about the Bible is the power of what y'all said, the power of the word. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also to the Greek. Also to the Greek. Paul is ready to preach the gospel of Christ. Are we? Are we ready to tell people about the gospel? Or are we ashamed? When, it, when everybody else is around us sometimes, and humans, nature, and where we're at sometimes, are we ashamed to speak up about the gospel? Are we ashamed of what the gospel says? When we really believe in something, we are eager to make it known. If you believe in something and a powerful thing may happen, you're eager to let people know about it. You're eager to let it known. Salvation delivers us from the judgment of God and the power of sin. It makes us God's children, giving us peace with him and a share in the future glory. And who does he offer to? All who want to believe. He talked about the Jews first because that was the one that God worked with them throughout the Old Testament.
to prepare salvation for the entire human race. And then Paul uses the term Greek, which includes all people. Okay? So are we inspired? Are we, are we taking the gospel and knowing how eager we are to talk about it? The gospel is the power of God and salvation. God chose preaching for the gospel to bring men to salvation. You know, there are a lot of different styles of preaching. A lot of different people, the way they preach and the way they talk and the way they discuss. And sometimes we associate different things with different preachers. And you can listen to some guys and you can't listen to some guys. But the word of God is all by itself. It's in a whole other field all by itself that we need to understand. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, the Bible says, For since in the wisdom of God the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to those who believe. What that is saying, brothers and sisters, is we've got to be careful whoever's speaking from this pulpit to make sure they're teaching the truth, to make sure they're understanding what they're teaching, to make sure that you're getting the whole grasp of what God is trying to say, to make sure we understand what Scripture is saying to us. You know, I may say Scripture sometimes, and, and it may be totally something different to me than it does to somebody else. But see, is this still relevant today in this Bible? I mean, it was written some years and years ago, and, and all of a sudden we make it relevant today. Why? Because let me tell you something. If you're a new baby in Christ and you read the Word, some of the same scriptures that you read may mean something different than somebody like Jerry who's been in the, in the ministry for many years. But see, that's what's cool about the Bible. Is because remember, I think it was Tim that used to say our ha-ha moments about the Bible. Because we can read the scripture over and over. We might have read it five times through the book of the book right now. You may have read, uh, read through this Bible six, eight, ten times. But sometimes as you read through the Bible, some of those other scriptures jump out at you. And grab a hold of you and say, This is what I mean by this. And you go, Oh, wow. Oh, wow. But you read it 10 times before. Why didn't it mean something then? Because hopefully you're growing. Because God says when we're baptized in the body of Christ, we're a new creature. We're somebody that's new. We're somebody that's taken on the mind of Christ to be like Christ, to understand what Christ wants us to have, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're going to be like Christ, we got to start when we go outside the doors right there, start thinking like Christ does. Now that's hard for some of us. Because some of those people out there are very rude and obnoxious. It's hard to ride by that person that's begging on the side of the road and not give them something. Because some of them, they've told us so many times they're making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year in that corner. But then it also reminds me of the scripture that says, When did you do this to me? You did it to the least of my brothers and sisters. So it's tough. I didn't say it was easy. It's tough. But see what's cool about the Word of God that we're understanding here is the Word of God as a new baby in Christ can be spiritual will, can help you to grow, can encourage you, to say things to you. As we go through life and we get to grow stronger in the Word of God and we learn more about the Word of God and we know all the stories and we're starting to understand all the stories and we read that scripture again, it's also for that person that says, oh, I didn't understand that. Now I get it. I mean, you're going to look at, we're going to look at, uh, Second Timothy here in just a minute, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read it out to you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wear it out. But we've heard this scripture forever, and you can probably quote it every one of you in this room almost. But we gotta understand it. Faith comes by hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter ten and verse seventeen. We are begotten, we're brought to spiritual birth by the gospel. The only reason you are a baptized believer is through this word. You understand that? It was not whoever baptized you. I was very blessed to have Brother Baker baptize me, an older man in this church here that was a uh, preacher. And, and, and I went to camps every year, and I was grown up in the church, and I was born inside the church. And my mama drilled me to make sure I was at the church, okay? And still drills to me to make sure I'm in church every week. And I'm okay with that. But my thing is, it's not Brother Baker that I understand the gospel. It's not, it's not who was teaching me in the Bible class out of Holloway and all the old great people that taught us in this Bible class. It's not those teachers. Oh, yeah, they had a hand in it. But where did they get it from? The Word of God. See, all of us have to understand that if you're struggling with something in your life and you're dealing with something spiritual in your life, you have to go back to the Word. I think brothers and sisters are vital. I really do. I think that you need to be in fellowship with one another. I think God has made that very clear in his Bible. Be in fellowship with one another. Have a brother or sister that you can call and talk to and pray with. And understand when they put their arms around you in prayer. But if you're struggling with something else, get yourself in this book. Because it's vital and important that we understand this book. And I also told you last week when I was preaching about this little reference. So if you're not sure what to do, go get one. 
that we don't have them right now, so I ordered more. I ordered more, okay, because I got chewed out last week that they weren't on the rack. There was three of them on the rack, and we called quickly, okay? I got more ordered. They will be here. And all this is very simple. If, if it's something that's your deal with heaven, it's right there in heaven, and they're all not that old. I don't even know the word, but it's also not bad to say, I don't know that answer. Let me get back to it. Nothing wrong with that. But we're all brought to spiritual birth by the gospel, the word of God. Of his own, in James chapter 1 and verse 18, it says, Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be kind, be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Jesus, God, wants us to be first fruits. He wants you to be vitally important and be understanding what he wants you to do. Be, be begotten, be brought to spiritual world. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, having been born again, which is a new creature, not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible, through the word of God which lives and abides forever. Listen, I tell you, every time I teach and every time I preach pretty much, I want you to have that relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I want you to have that relationship with God. Because once it becomes personal to you, that's when you start to be understanding what spiritualness is about. It's not mom and dad's. It's not the kids. It's not my wife's. It's not my husband's. It's my own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Where I'm dealing with Jesus one-on-one, -on -one, now I said to you just a minute ago, you got to have a brother that you go pray with. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I still believe that. But what I'm saying is it all begins with this word of God, which deals with a personal relationship with you and Jesus Christ. And once that becomes important in your life, when you walk out those doors over there, it becomes a whole little difference about how you walk down the road and about, about how you notice people and how about you look at people and how you want to pray for people. And how you walk down the road and you go, oh, that person's struggling. Let me just say a little prayer for them. So instead of having to give that person money at the light, it's just as good to pray for them, in my opinion. Because you don't know their situation. Okay? If they look like they're hungry, I mean, there's people here to come on Tuesdays and, and and, and Nancy can tell you, there's some of them that don't need that food. And there's some of them that can't hold it, scarf it down before they get it over. Mm -hmm. So you know exactly who's who. And we don't know on the side of the road if they're making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. And it really doesn't matter at that point. Let's let them deal with God. Mm -hmm. Because God knows their situation and what he's going to go through. What we got to do is understand. If you don't have the five bucks to give them, that's fine. You don't have the dollar to give them, that's fine. If you give them food and they turn it down, that's fine. You planted the seed. But I also want you to just say, while well, that light, you're waiting on that light, instead of staring at them and thinking they're not going to look at you, you make eye contact with them. Say a little prayer for See, the thing is, he knows what their situation is. We don't. We know the Lord that knows that situation, how we can guide it. How this book helps us to what the Bible is. To me, the Bible is the Word, yes, but it's the Word of God. And it's God breathed. So if God breathed it into my system, I need to understand that. I need to walk my life on a daily basis as I'm a Christian. See, sometimes the connotation of Christians got so wrapped up in the world that it's become millions of different meanings. No, you're still a Christian. I'm loved by God. And I've got a work that I need to do for God. If Christian means something else to that person, that's their problem. But we can't be ashamed of the gospel that we just talked about. So I need to be walking down the road and I need to be saying little prayers about people. Not about people, for people. I'm sorry. I want you to understand what I'm saying. And if I and if I go down the road and I'm able to help somebody, should we help them? Absolutely. Absolutely. I spoke to somebody the other day, the other night, they pulled over to help an old woman lady on the side of the road for changing tire. And I said, man, you will be blessed tremendously by that. Don't tell too many people. Just leave it alone. You know who knows? The God for you person that worked that way. That's who knows. That's who understands where we're coming from. Yes, ma'am. I also feel that the more setting and reading you do, the more mature you get in faith. But also, I strongly believe that God enlightens you on what you're studying and reading as you become mature. In other words, you know, you can read the same verse or event over and over and over and over, and over again, and just one day all of a sudden it's like something just pops out. Right. And I feel that that's God's giving you more information so you can understand it and, you know, grow it. That's when you need it. That's what's cool about God is he knows when we need something, he supplies that need. We sing it, we talk about it, we read about it, but we got to understand that God supplies that need. So we are a God, box of spiritual word. The word is the sword of the spirit. 
Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17 it says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So, what is the helmet of salvation? Huh? It's your faith. Okay. Let's look over here. Let's go over here. The beast. I'm not sure I asked that question if I really know what I'm going to answer. So let's look, at, let's look at 14. We're talking about a section here that starts in verse 10, but we don't have time to go through all that because I could take up all day for this, this verse. Stand therefore, having heard your ways of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the excuse me, preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith which, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the weak wood. Listen, and, and take the helmet of salvation, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The salvation provided by God through Christ is our safety. It's our victory. The Holy Spirit enables us to use the sword of the Spirit, which is the Bible, which is the Word, to become spiritually strong to lead others to Christ. Let me let you know this. Let me see if I can explain it this way. We read the Bible before we're baptized. And we read the Word of God. We read it as a non well, I should say a non-believer. A, a non um, Christian, yeah, okay, a non baptized believer, maybe. Let me say it that way. You may believe, but you, you, you're still reading the Word of God. And you're trying to, and you're trying to study the Word of God prior to uh, baptism or Christianity. Okay, now you're still a good person. You're still got all these things. You're reading the Bible. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. But the Bible is supposed to be able to convict your heart and make you understand what you're supposed to do. Okay, the Bible teaches us very clearly. Clearly, repent, which means turn away from what we're doing, what we should be doing, to, to become the Christian that we are, and be baptized. He didn't say wait till you're ready to be baptized. He didn't say wait till you're strong enough to be baptized. He didn't even say wait till you understand to be baptized. What did he say? Repent and be baptized. Period. Okay? Every one of us, in the name of who? The Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Correct? So then he says later on that we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit when? Once we come up out of the watery grave of baptism, that's when we receive the Holy Spirit. Now the Bible becomes a little different to me because I'm reading the Bible through the Holy Spirit type of thing. So now a lot of the things that the Bible says that I receive as a Christian, I am receiving as a Christian because I have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Prior to that, I didn't have the Holy Spirit, did I? I may have understood there was a God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus, the Trinity that was at the very beginning of time in Genesis chapter 1. Okay? They were all there. Some people don't believe that. They were all there. And then we get baptized, and now I've received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't only have God. I don't only have Jesus because I believe in Jesus. But now I have the Holy Spirit, which is what? A God. For what? For your life. So when I walk down that road, I got the Holy Spirit with me all the time? Yes, I do. Because I am a firm believer, baptized Christian. So I always have the Holy Spirit with me. And what the Holy Spirit does for me, it guides me the right way. It's almost like, I want to be careful saying this, almost like that little voice in your head says, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. Huh? I don't want some of y'all to say, well, Tommy hears voices in his head. Yes, I do. Yep, sure do. I hear the Holy Spirit say, Tommy, you know you shouldn't be here. Tommy, you know you can't handle that. Tommy, you know you shouldn't be doing that. That's now the Holy Spirit teaching me, guiding me of which my past should be. Awesome. I won't get to that. You got it. You did good. The next thing is he what? He protects us. So if we go that way and we're not supposed to do it that way, what happens a lot of times? We get turned on a side path and sometimes we don't understand that to win. You're on the other side. And then you say, oh man, the Holy Spirit must have gotten me through that. Because there's no way I could have made it alone. There's no way I could have made it by myself. But see, we receive all that because now we're Christians and now we have relationships through the Word of God. Now when you read that same verse, that, that same verse may mean something totally a little different because now you have the Holy Spirit guiding you and understanding what you should be doing. So now that's why that verse goes, oh, wow. And then it's sort of like Lisa said, the more we mature and the more we get older, we think, oh, there's nothing else we need to learn. Oh, yeah, this. It's amazing because that book's still got things for us to learn that we don't quite understand. And there's still things in this book as Christians 
I heard Lagarde Smith say this uh, uh, one day. He can't wait to get to heaven. And I, I feel bad who was forever behind him in life. Uh, that was funny. So we all know Lagarde Smith. We used to do late night with Lagarde Smith at the Spiritual Growth Workshop. And I was, I, the first time I did it, I was the one in charge of taping. And I, I thought, man, this is going to be cool. I don't know why they put me in charge of taping. Well, the neatest night, though, it was going to be. 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning for you guys. <laughs> but anyway, we'd go to Lagarde Smith. We'd start at 11 o'clock, and the guy was amazing. He could quote scripture amazing. You ever heard him talking about He's actually on my Facebook. Every time you read, uh, write something, it's got to be long. Mm-hmm. Because he's an attorney that's a, a scientist, an attorney that understands scripture and understands what's going on. I love it to death. And I follow him very heavily. I don't know why I should have said that. Um, but anything, he, he is mature, and now he says, I can't wait till I get to heaven and I can ask God those questions that I need to ask. Because I don't quite understand what the Bible means about this situation that I'm in. Wow. See, he understands the word. He's matured to a level that he understands. That's what's so cool about the word. It doesn't matter if you're a baby in one of those little classrooms down there or the Bible stories that sometimes we need to go back and learn. Or if you're a mature Christian and you're reading the word for the 20th time in that same verse, and you say, what is he saying? And you pray about it. And you understand what he's trying to say. Okay. So number one was the Bible above given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Number two was the power of the word. Number three is the Bible is significance for man's life. What does it mean to us? The revelation of the Bible teaching of Christ gives us the will of of the Father. What is the Father's will? To obey His will and get to what? That's one of our favorite lines for uh, kids saying. What is God's, what is true success in God? Living your life and going to heaven. What is failure? Living your life and not going to heaven. We'll make the kids say that. Kids say that. John chapter 5, verse 19, the Bible says that Jesus answered and said that most assuredly I say to you, the Son, the Son can do nothing of himself, but he, he but what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does likewise man. That's what God is telling us about. Be like Jesus. Be like Christ. Be, if you see a brother in Christ that's really close and doing the things he should be doing, that's who we want to follow. That's who we want to work with. John chapter 7, verse 16 says, Jesus answered and said to them, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. So who did the doctrine come from? What is the doctrine? We'll get to that in Second Timothy. Just a minute. Okay? Bear with me. Be with me. John chapter 12, verse 49 and 50. For I have not spoken of my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. That's Jesus talking. He knows that his Father sent him to do a task. He has that task to do, and he's going to complete that task, no matter what. So the revelation of the Bible, the teaching of Christ, gives us the will of the Father. God has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness through Christ. What are the things you need in life? Health. Did God give it to you? Food. God give it to you? Shelter. God give it to you? Water. Did God give it to us? See, we got to get in the mindset that we didn't supply that. God gave it to us. God is the one supplying all of our needs. He supplies what we need and God that is through Christ. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He has given us what we need to be complete, not only physically, but spiritually. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I want y'all to go over there because this is where I'm going to get into this scripture for you. Very popular scripture that we all talk about. And if I don't know if you make notes or not, but you can make notes if you want. But if you don't, that's fine too. I'm just giving you what I some of what Walt puts it on paper and some of that. Second Timothy chapter three. We're going to do verse sixteen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Some others say we're disciplined in righteousness, okay? Some other uh, Bible deals do it uh, uh, discipline. But what we're going to talk about this chapter 3, verse 16. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God, which is what we talked about at the very beginning of our thing. Inspiration meant what? 
God breathed. Okay, that's what an inspiration there was. God breathed. So that is what we understand there. And, and then he says, and is profitable for doctrine. Okay? Now, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. What is doctrine? Teaching. Very good. Very good answer. Teaching. Talk, doctrine is teaching. So, so it's profitable for teaching. What is profitable for teaching? The inspiration that God breathed scripture. Okay? So it's profitable for teaching. What is reproof? Correction. Correction. Shows us where we are wrong. Okay? We all stumble and fall short of the glory of God. So where we are wrong, the all scripture. Now, Paul here was basically talking about the Old Testament at the time that he wrote this. But in our side, now that we did all this, all scripture is Old and New Testament. Understand that, okay? He's talking about everything. Everything here. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God reads, and it's profitable for teaching, and it is and it's telling us what we're doing wrong for instruction in righteousness, which is what? How we should live. How we need to treat our proper man. How we need to treat others. How we need to treat our fellow people. How we need to treat everybody. Instruction in righteousness. Just because everybody's doing something else doesn't mean that's the way it should be. And, and, and that's what we got to be careful with. Okay? And then he says its purpose. What is its purpose? That the man of God may be complete. Everything God wants us to be. Be complete. When can we say we're complete? Absolutely. When I get to heaven, I can say I'm complete. So up until that point, why do older people say, I don't think God has anything else for me to do? They can't say that because you're not complete. So obviously you're here for a reason. Obviously you're here to save you for a reason. Let's get personal about it. We have work to do. We have a task to do. Just like what Jesus said. My father sent me. My father's the one I dealt with. My father did all this. So now I got to do it. Guess what? My Jesus did all that. My Lord did all this. My Lord did all that. So now who has to do it? Tommy. That's where the personal relationship comes in. That's where now it's your problem. Not problem. It's your job. It's your task. It's your love. It's your abilities and talents that he's given you. Complete everything that God wants us to be. And then he says thoroughly equipped. Thoroughly furnished. It's given the direction God wants us to have and equipped with all we need to be successful. <laughs> all our need to be successful in what this is. I think God will give us that task when we get there. Let's let's get there first. Oh yes. You know, I mean, I think that's the most important thing for us to make sure we get there. I I, I look at heaven and I, I'm probably going to be bawling my eyes out, crying, mm -hmm. and just say, "Oh my goodness, look at this place." You know, and and guess what I'm going to think about? I'm not going to think about life behind me or what all I messed up or what I did. I'm going to think where I'm at right now, what God wants me to do, my next chapter mm -hmm. in my life. Yes. You know, you don't know what kind. I know I'll be in spiritual form. That's all I know. Because he's also telling us that we go to the heavenly places before we get there. I think that's a preparation. If you look at Luke chapter one, verse seventeen, I think it says the very end of that, end of that thing. One of my favorite lines is, "We need to be a people who be prepared to be ready for the Lord." That's what Luke says in the end of that chapter. I think it's one seventeen, if I'm right. You, that's one of my favorite things is be ready be prepared be ready for the Lord you need to be getting prepared right now you know when hurricane's coming we got to get prepared we got to get all the supplies we need and everything else that we need to try to do the best we can to protect us and our family guess what God's the same way God's coming I don't know about all y'all in this room but God's coming I don't know when he's coming but he's coming he's coming back to get his children that's what he said I'm coming back to get my children and I praise him for that. And I love him for that. I might go to that heavenly place, which is still preparing me for heaven on judgment day. And I don't really know what that heavenly place is or where it's at. I'm not worried about that. If God said it's there, guess what? When I die and I did everything I could, I hope I go to that heavenly place so I can get there. That's what we got to worry about. Forget trying to control things that we can't control. Control what you can control. Doug can only control Doug. And he can guide his wife to try to do the best he can. 
You see what I'm saying? So we got to be careful about that. Yes, ma'am. I think we should read uh, Second uh, Peter 1 in the Christian graces. Because to add to this, add to this, add to this, and this is what makes us complete in Christ. I have this. It's Second Peter chapter one verse three, I believe. Um, yeah. It, well, no, no. It's three is what I was going to bring out, but I don't know. Second Peter one, uh, starting in verse five down to verse seven. Okay. Because it, this is how we become. In Christ, by adding adding these Christian graces, add to a, 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 a more excellent, to more excellent. I, I agree with that. What I meant by complete is think about this. If I put a puzzle together, it's not complete to what that last piece gets put. In. Yeah, I've completed it as much as I can. And I think that that's what he's asking us to do. We are to be a Christian for you, prepared, ready for the Lord. And we're going to be complete in our ways because we're trying to take those steps to where we think our steps need to be each step of the day. But we're not going to be totally complete, so I'm happy. Because that's my ultimate goal. The ultimate goal of that puzzle is to get it all done so you can see the whole picture. That's my ultimate goal is to get to heaven so I can see my whole life. And what it meant. And what it is. And what it was. You know, so... We, we got to understand that, but thoroughly furnished, given the directions God wants us to have and equipped with all who need to be successful. So the Bible relates to us, what man is. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he said, let, let us make man what? In our own image. How do you say our? Who owes that? The truth. In our image. Capital O, in our image. So he made me like God, like Jesus, like the Holy Spirit. In his image. What does that mean? That I look like him when you see me. Not that I'm perfect. Because that's there's nobody on the earth perfect other than what Jesus was when we lived on the earth. Mm -hmm. But you're looking at me like that light. Hope. And then I don't let you down. And I try my best to do what needs to be done. That's what we need to be leading our lives. That's what we're talking about evangelism. If you're eager about something we said at the beginning of the class, you'll teach it, you'll learn, you'll 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 share it. If it's important to you, you'll share it. If Bible class is important to you, you'll be here. If the Bible's important, you'll be at Bible class. Because that's where you get to put your input. That's where you get to open up the word and understand what it's doing. A lot of times in the pulpit, we're teaching to all kinds of Christians, babes, and all kinds. And y'all maybe teach to a couple in here. But in here, we get down to the nitty gritty about what the Bible says, about what the word means to us, what he's trying to tell us. So, what man is. The next thing is what sin is. Whoever commits sin, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4 says, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. Boy, do we have that rampant today in our society. I'm going to tell all of y'all out there on camera. All you that pilfer from people and steal from people and do everything in your life for the wrong reason, God's going to get you. You think that you know the church used to be so off limits for people to come in here and try to take over a church or try to shoot people in a church or try to do things in a church in a multi crowd? I am very thankful that my God knows your heart. I'm also very nervous for you that my God knows your heart. And I promise, and I'm telling you a fact, I promise. That my God will take care of it. I promise He's going to take care of it. I promise He's one. So you do what you feel like you need to do. And my God knows where you're at. Whoever commits sins, lawlessness. But all that, I still have a desire, God says, to be what? Saved. Even though you've done things wrong, and even though you've done all these things, and even though you don't think you can be corrected, even though you don't think you can turn away from what you thought, or what you might have done, or what you might be thinking right now, God still says, I want you to be saved. John chapter 5, verse 39 and 40 says, You search the scripture, for in them you think, this is Jesus talking, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me, but you are not willing to come to me that you 
may have life. That you may have life. The next one is the Bible will be our judge. John chapter 12, verse 48 says, Jesus speaking again, who rejects, he who rejects me and does not receive my words, has that who judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Jesus said, I will judge him. I will take care of all that. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 3 says, Therefore we must give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels provide or prove steadfast in every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? All of us are people that's heard the Lord. All of us are not going to be judging anybody else. Thank goodness. I'm glad my mom will not judge me in judgment. <laughs> implications of these truths the Bible is not to be read like any other book of human origin hmm? the Bible is not to be read by any other book of human origin the Bible does not just contain the word of God just become the word of God it is the word of God hmm. understand that God breathed inspired words if God to be the book Honestly, I'm going to tell you that I, I struggle. It ought to be the book that's with me all the time. And the only place I have it's on my phone. It's with me all the time. The only place that I can have most of it is here. We must become like Jesus, who surely believed in the authority of the Scriptures, how important the Scriptures were and how they are. So our challenge is, and we're, also, we're out of time, Respect the Bible as it is, the Word of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 13. You can read that later if you'd like. I'm gonna leave these, I'll leave this up here so you can look at some of those scriptures if you need. We need to respect the Bible as it is, the Word of God. We need to study the Word because 2 Timothy says, the study of the Word, be diligent is what he said, so you can be approved from the Word of God. Uh, we need to speak. We need to speak the Word. We need to speak where the Bible speaks and we need to be silent where the Bible is silent. That's a hard one for some of us. And the reason it's hard is because, let me just tell you this, I just got a book by Brother Higginbotham, who is a preacher in uh, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. I think it's Carnes Church of Christ. His, his son became gay and he wrote this book. He did everything by scripture. And I, I'm, I'm amazed at what this guy did. He never did tell his kid he wasn't welcome. He never showed his kid. But he knows where his daddy stands, the kid does. So that he knows that the kid did not come to his house with those things with him. He knows that he does not support him in that way. And we're reading this book, and it's amazing how much he says, I still love my son. Think about that. Is that godly? Absolutely. Absolutely. Love the center of behavior sin. Yeah, love the center of behavior sin. But I'm going to tell you this you know how hard it is to not. Change scripture to support something in my family might have done. It's hard. When God says, speak what the Bible speaks, be silent or silent. That's what we need to do. And the last one is we need to search the scriptures. I think this is so vitally important. Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. These were more of my fair minded than those who was destined like in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out. Whether these things were so. I challenge you to understand the scripture. I challenge you to understand what the word of God is. I challenge you to take it, be in it. And I'm talking about Tommy too. Don't think I'm just saying that I do it. No. I'm talking about myself. I'm stepping on my toes. I'm talking about it's something that I need to, to, to be in the word daily. To be in it daily to understand what God wants us to do. Let's pray. Father, dear Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to open up the word today and understand what the Bible means to us and what it is, how you took the time and the effort to write it for us, for our lives, for our guidance. Thank you so much for everything you put into place that we can be good Christians and that we know the task that you put before us. 
But Father, we want to be able to do that. Challenge us to open up your word daily, to live it daily, to live more like Christ, to show the love that Christ showed as he went down the road in our everyday lives, in our daily life. Sometimes it's easy on Sunday, Father, but you know, Thursday, Friday, it's a little tough. So help us to always look to you for your guidance and your strength and your work. That we can open up your word and understand. Help us prepare our minds now as we get ready to go into worship. That you'll clear our minds, clear our thoughts, that we can worship and glorify you and sing together and commune together and hear a message from your words. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y